Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. I recently had a ham ask me about setting up rig control uh, for FL Digi under Linux. And I thought, you know, maybe that's a subject I should cover in a video. Now, there's a few hams out there using Linux, maybe more than a few. I know a lot of you are on Windows, but for you Linux hams uh, that are going to venture into using rig control with FL Digi or WSJTX or any of the other programs, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about how you do that. First, just a little bit of history on, uh, on the uh, way that Linux handles serial devices. Now with Windows, you're used to seeing serial devices named with the moniker COM and a number with a colon, COM1, COM2, COM3 for the serial ports. Windows uses device names to represent hardware. Linux is a POSIX operating system that's based on the design of Unix which was invented back in the 70s or so uh, to be used as a mainframe operating system. Now mainframe computers back then were big room-sized boxes and the only way that people could interact with them was through terminals, originally through teletypes and eventually through dumb CRT terminals that had a screen and a keyboard and could do nothing more than send and receive uh, text via a serial port. So all of the communication with the mainframe computer was done through serial ports. Now, under Unix, the uh, methodology for representing the system is all in the file system. Basically, everything is a file. So if I open my home folder here, and we'll go to the root of the file system. Now, you see all these directories that you would think are all on your hard disk, but not necessarily so. I'll go to a list view. Some directories are virtual, that is, they're created by the uh, operating system in real time to represent other things other than files. And the directory that I'm interested in is this one, dev, D-E-V. That stands for devices. And when I open that up, that's going to show me a list of what looks like directories and files, but these actually represent hardware in the computer. For example, this file, DSP stands for digital signal processor. That's not a file. That's actually the hardware for the sound device in my computer for capture and playback. If I was to copy raw audio data to this file, it would come out of the speakers in my computer. If I was to copy raw data from this file, I would get a stream of raw audio information from my default recording device, like the microphone. So this looks like it's a file, but it is actually not. It is a representation of the hardware in my computer. Now if we scroll down we'll see a bunch of files named TTY. You see these? TTY 1 and on. These are placekeepers for serial ports. Serial ports um, will be represented by these file names in the dev directory. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the list. These are all placekeepers from the early mainframe days where they had lots of terminals they would have these default TTY devices uh, to represent those terminals and Linux just carries that over. So these don't actually point to anything right now, they're virtual. But what I'm interested in is when I plug in my rig control interface. Now what I'm using is a Keyspan serial interface. I'll show you a picture of it here. It's a USB to serial adapter. Pretty common type of interface. Um, other uh, things you might plug in would be the USB port from your radio, like the ICOM 7300 or other rigs, and when you plug that in, it creates a serial port that you're used to seeing like on Windows, where it would be probably COM3. Now I'm going to plug in my USB serial device, which I just did, and you'll see a new device name appear. There it is. TTY USB 0. So what happened is Linux recognized the new device, loaded the driver for it, and created this virtual file, TTY USB 0. This represents my serial port. Now a note on device drivers. Um, with Windows you're used to having to install device drivers for every new piece of hardware you plug into the computer. In Linux there's a myriad of those device drivers that have already been built, they're already available by default, so it's very rare that you have to install additional drivers. When you plug in the USB cable from your radio, like your ICOM 7300 as an example, you'll see a device appear here that'll be TTY 
USB and probably a zero. Also, Linux is case sensitive. So a capital U is different from a lowercase u in a file name. So that's important. So what we want to do, or what we want to note here, is our path, which the directory is dev and the file name TTY capital USB zero. Okay, make a note of that. Now I'm going to go load FL Digi. And uh, we're going to go into the uh, configuration um, menu. And we're going to go down to rig control. Now in here you've got a device for the, or an entry for the device name for your serial device. And you'll note I've already got it in there, slash dev, slash TTY, capital USB zero. That's it. That's all I have to do. Now, FL Digi is pointing to my uh, Keyspan serial adapter. And if I turn on my, uh, it's plugged into my Yezu FT817. Now, I just turned on my uh, FT817. And if I turn the dial on the radio, you'll see the frequency changing on FL Digi. So it's successfully talking to my radio. You'll have the same options in WSJTX and other programs where you go to rig control. You'll have a, an entry for the device and it will be that device name that you discovered when you plugged in your serial device. You may have to configure other serial options, RTS, DTR, uh, baud rate, and so on. Um, but that all depends on what your radio is set for. So that's pretty much it. That's how you'll configure rig, uh, the rig interface um, for your software under Linux. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like the video with a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Also, join the Facebook page. We can discuss the content of the videos, ask questions, find answers, and hopefully develop a lively community. Thanks again.